Springdale at 1030. Springdale is not bad. Where this girl lives is on the west side of Springdale and I'm on the, I have to, I have to go across the city. It used to not be a city when I went to school there. It was just maybe 20,000, 25,000. It's probably pushing 80,000 now. So I've watched this small city uh, grow. We've had exponential growth, I would say, in Northwest Arkansas over the years, and it hasn't slowed down. <clears throat> Such a beautiful place with lots of natural resources. So, um, this morning I was just thinking about it being Thanksgiving Thursday and how a life of gratitude will make you happy because you are only as happy as you are grateful. And I have in my own life seen this so many times that when I begin to be in pride and uh, oh, what's that word called? Not self-serving but think everybody owes you something. Entitlement. That's the word I'm looking for. When you get into entitlement, and it, that can be an evil spirit. When you get into entitlement, there is no gratitude. It's like if you labored and you gave a gift to someone that cost you something, but they thought you owed it to them, there is no gratitude. So you can't be gracious to someone who feels like you owe them something. And, and I'll just say this again. You are only as happy as you are grateful. So I read this years ago, and this is true. And I even have a grateful journal. I haven't written it in, in quite a while. But, I, but it's a wonderful thing. It's its own journal. And so I would write 10 things I was grateful for every day, which was easy for me. I would get up to 20 or 30 because I endeavor to practice being grateful. It will change your attitude to be grateful. It will change your attitude. <clears throat> so try it. When you feel like things aren't fair, or I, I have to sneeze. <coughs> oh, excuse me, I have to sneeze. <laughs> oh my goodness, it must be dusty or something. I don't know. It will change your attitude to be grateful. It will change your attitude if you feel entitled. You begin to be unhappy and demanding and critical. And, you know, it's a slippery slope into just some ugly things, right? Just some ugly attitudes and no one wants to be around someone like that so let's choose to be grateful and here's another thing that you probably knew is that father god is delighted it delights his heart just as if you had labored and purchased something for your child and they were delighted in it and overwhelmed with gratitude it is a good thing and it causes you to feel good well it's the same way with our Heavenly Father he loves it when we can be grateful I'm, I'm kind of seeing myself in this and I'm thinking I look kind of wrinkly this morning but you know what here's my my words of wisdom to myself in 10 years when I look back I'm gonna say oh honey you look good so I'm just gonna sit with that you know I'm just gonna sit with I look as good as I can look, and I'm okay with that. Uh, God is good to me, and I am grateful. So I'm running over to Springdale to pull Sadie's blood, get her numbers. We'll be breeding her to Turbo, and that may be the last breeding I do this year. It, it will be the last breeding I do this year. We're going to take March and April off, try to get out into the show get some more girls finished my uh, young up-and-comings and then I really wanted to finish Steffi and Callie too I felt they deserved it Caboodle would have been finished if we would have got to go to all those shows in March I 
think she's already got points. I'd have to look it up and see. So, uh, yeah, excited about that. Tim says he's going fishing. He has a boat. He hadn't been on the boat. When we were on the boat a year ago in July for our anniversary. He took me out to ski and swim. So, I know, a dump truck tries to pass another dump truck and we all have to slow down. And it's okay. So gratitude, that's definitely my word today because I love being happy and it's great for your immune system and your overall health to be happy, to be grateful, to be gracious. If you if you're in, if you're in the trench of entitlement, you're not great. You're not gracious to other people. You're hateful and demanding. You know, and I just had a thought too about uh, the children I see today, say junior high and high school, and they're being taught this. I'm not saying this is all stemming from them. They're being taught this. It's quite the culture of disrespect. But you know, in, I think it's Ephesians where it says, Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So here's the problem with the whole culture of disrespect, right? You're, di you're saying ugly, mean things about other people. You're, you're disrespecting your parents. You're disrespecting your siblings. You're disrespecting your nation. Instead of being grateful, you're, I mean, I, not that I am very much into Xboxes and these games that are available today, but years ago when my kids, when they first came out with this, my kids were young teenagers and I refused to have one in my home. I wouldn't have one in the house. I, I never allowed them to play those kind of things um, for several reasons. That uh, I think it uh, disrupts the their social growth and definitely it bought, it's an addiction and it um, bothers their brain development really bothers their brain development so but I said all that to say this I have seen some of the games and one of them was called Grand Theft Auto okay so the whole game was people stealing cars that's disrespectful to steal it's not only against God's good laws and will for us. And so here's how you know if something's wrong. If someone did it to you and you didn't like it, the reason you didn't like it is because it's wrong. So don't be going and doing it to other people. So, but my point is, uh, a lot of the music today is very disrespectful. You know, these people are disrespecting other human beings. They're not being they're not honoring. They're not honoring one another. Even talking behind someone's back is dishonoring. You know, in, in the Passion Translation in 1 Corinthians, it says, Love does not traffic in shame or dishonor. So I have about a minute left. Oh, so let me finish my thought on the, this generation of disrespect. And, and now, I, I, trust me, I've seen plenty of 30 and 40 and 50 year olds that traffic in disrespect. And that is just disrespecting everyone around them, if they work, the place that they work, uh, their co-workers, people in general. So that, uh, this is my thought, is that is one reason that suicide is so high in our teens, is because whatsoever men sow it, that shall he also reap. So if you're sowing this disrespect, no respect for human life, no respect for another person's opinions or values or the way they want to do life. You are going to reap that. And that's just a, a, a law. It's just a spiritual law. Whatsoever you sow, that shall you also reap. And you see these young children who are buying the lie that they are worthless. 
and that's how the enemy can take their life because they feel like they have no value. Why, why bother to live another day? And that's tragic. And the enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy. And he certainly is doing a good job with our youth today. So I would say, along with being grateful and living in that spirit of gratitude, let's really step out of that, catch ourselves. Because whatsoever you sow, you're going to reap. So if other people are disrespectful to you or dishonor you, it could be because you have sown seeds of disrespect. So let's just catch ourselves when we're trafficking in shame and disrespect because love doesn't do that. So that's my thought for today. I went a little long. Hope you guys have a fantastic Tuesday before Thanksgiving. We have three more litters due this weekend, and I did get some sleep last night, as you can tell. <laughs> I feel pretty good this morning. Uh, we'll see next week how I feel taking care of all these other litters. All right, bye now. Walk in grace.